Hello, and I'm Dr. Chad Lavender from Marshall Orthopedics, and we're going to discuss outcomes of biologic augmentation of an ACL reconstruction plus internal brace. We'll talk about improving outcomes through biologic ACL augmentation. First, we'll start with ACL challenges, and then we'll talk briefly on the technique, and then we'll get to the outcomes, especially of our clinical trial. So the question everyone asks is why change? Well, because graft-free rupture is a common complication after ACL reconstruction. Our newer techniques and fixation devices have failed to really improve the re-rupture rates and the return to play after ACL reconstruction. When we look at the less than 25-year-old patients, they have up to a 23% risk of secondary ACL injury to either the ipsilateral or the contralateral extremity. The estimated return to self-reported pre-injury knee function is very dismal, 35 to 60% in some studies. When we look at specific patient groups, such as female soccer players, this study showed 34% of female soccer players who returned had secondary ACL tears. So all of those publications lead us about four years ago to how can we improve on a great technique, which is the all inside ACL reconstruction and improve on those results, make it stronger and make it heal better in the long term and improve the long term outcomes. Our goal was to further improve the biology and the stability of the ACL reconstruction. We focused on the biologic augmentation of the ACL. This uses the Arthrex Angel system to provide us with bone marrow aspiration, which then gets concentrated into bone marrow concentrate. That gets added to Allosync Pure and to autograph bone that we collect with the Arthrex graft net during the procedure to create this composite graft that then goes around the ACL graft in the femoral and the tibial tunnels. We also add in an internal brace. Slightly more on the technique. We harvest bone marrow aspiration from the proximal tibia. We then mix three cc's of BMC with five cc's of allosync pure and one cc of autograph bone. We then inject that biocomposite graft into the femoral tunnel before seeding the graft, but after passing the tightrope out of the femur. We then inject the biocomposite graft into the tibial socket, and then we pass our all inside graft into the femur and the tibia and fixate and secure the internal brace in a swivel lock on the anterior medial tibia. The internal brace we use has been shown to decrease elongation, increase ultimate load to failure, and has provided no stress shielding of the graft. Now let's turn our attention to our results. Here's a paper we published last year which was 16 consecutive patients that we retrospectively reviewed at around and after the two year mark. All patients were released to play at six months. 11 of 16 were able to be surveyed at two years. And we found their IKDC subjective scores to be 81 out of 87 and nine of 11 returned to their self-reported pre-injury status. And if we remember those dismal results, that number is very important moving forward, the return to pre-injury status. Safety, zero re-ruptures, one patient required an MUA, no infections. Here you'll see an MRI on the right-hand side of the screen, two years out showing tunnel consolidation in the femur and an ACL graft going up into the femoral socket. Here is our latest retrospective review that's been submitted for publication. We followed 58 consecutive patients that we retrospectively reviewed after the two-year mark. 51 of 58 patients were followed and able to be surveyed. Amazing results, 94% on their IKD subjective scores, 94% returned to their self-reported pre-injury status, and 92% scored on their ACL RSI. As far as safety, zero re-ruptures and no infections. This brings us to our clinical trial, and we have two cohorts based on age. We have patients over 25, which get allograft all inside reconstructions, and then the younger cohort, less than 24, which get quad autographed all insides. Those cohorts are then randomized to either receiving biologic augmentation with an internal brace versus no augmentation. So in our prospective clinical trial, we have 60 patients enrolled. We've reached full enrollment and all patients are at 12 weeks. 38 patients are at six months. 31 patients are greater than a year. Some of the things that we're looking at, functional range of motion at two and six weeks, the functional testing, for limb symmetry index at 12 weeks and six months, narcotic use, and then radiographic data such as MRIs at 12 weeks and CT scans at six months, and then also subjective scoring. When we looked at the patient's narcotic use, we looked at pills per day for the first three days and found that the treatment group actually took one fewer pill per day for those first three days. They also stopped their pain medication one day sooner 
at around 7.6 days on average. This is very important because we know that the 10 to 12 day mark is an indicator for chronic narcotic use after surgery. Range of motion at two and six weeks was found to be significantly improved in our treatment group, as you can see in the blue bars, compared to the non-treatment group. One of our most significant findings in the clinical trial is the functional testing at 12 weeks that we did. We put patients through a barrage of hop testing and then we quantified their limb symmetry to their normal knee. It should be noted, this was done blindly by an independent observer in each case. And what we found was remarkable. The 12 week limb symmetry index in the treatment group was at 12 weeks, 80% to their normal knee versus the non-treatment group at around 35%. Obviously this was statistically significant. When we look at CT scans at six months, we find less tunnel widening and more tunnel consolidation in the treatment group. This is preliminary data. However, it is statistically significant at this point. Here's a slide showing quality of life scores at six months and one year with improvements in the treatment group versus the control group. This slide shows the IKD sub subjective score and a very similar curve for both groups, but at the one and two year mark, you see improvements in the treatment group. And I will show that, that at the two year mark, that over 90% correlates on the treatment group with the other retrospective reviews I talked about earlier. And that's very important because what we're seeing is correlation between studies and valid data. Here's an MRI three months out from ACL reconstruction, and you'll see the femoral tunnel consolidation on the right-hand side of the screen. The ACL graft comes up into the femur and completely consolidated tunnel laterally, which is exactly what we're trying to get with our biologic ACL reconstructions. So here are two images of an MRI at 12 weeks after biologic augmentation. And on the left, you'll see it's almost like we put a bone block around that ACL graft that's coming up into the femur. And there's great consolidation laterally. Then on the right-hand side of the screen, this is what's really exciting. If you look closely, it's like the biologic composite graft is interdigitating into that ACL graft in the tibia. And obviously notice the excellent appearing dark ACL graft across the joint. Here's an example of CT scans at six months, looking at the tibial tunnel and the treatment group on the right, a nice tight tunnel, consolidation distally, versus the control group, which has widening, and we see that very uh, regularly with ACL reconstructions. Another example of CT scan in these patients at six months. On the right-hand side, you'll see the treatment group, a nice tight tunnel, which did not widen, has great consolidation laterally versus an expanded tunnel on the left, as you can see, uh, and that's common with ACL reconstructions. Thank you for listening, and we hope that you found this to be very useful and you continue to use this in your practice and see similar results.